is the gospel according to Matthew chapter 18. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. All right. Okay. <laughs> Today, <clears throat> oh, you have, and then I have. Okay. Yep. Oh, grace and peace to you. On this, the day of God's work, our hands. God's work, our hands, Sunday, where we are especially called to love our neighbor and live in freeing peace. Good morning, everybody. I'm this is really privileged. I guess this is uh, pastor's wife privilege that I get. Um, last time we had outdoor service and I was here, I brought the dogs, but they didn't really like it. So instead, I kind of put on the dog here. Um, Thank you so much for your prayers, for um, your well wishes, for all the, all the, all the reaching out you've done. Um, just to make sure if there's anybody who doesn't know, uh, there was a shooting at UNC Chapel Hill in North Carolina. Um, I think it was the 24th. I might have the date wrong. Um, a uh, professor was murdered by one of his graduate students, and it happened to be the professor that our son Will was working under and um, he also happened to be walking by the window where the sh uh, outside of the window in the office where the shooting happened so he was close in several ways to the event um, he's he's um, we've all been surrounding him with with our love he's been getting help from um, the services available on the campus the department has really shown up well to help him because this is also, you know, thrown a wrench in his, his uh, education. Um, so thank you for all the prayers and thoughts. And definitely keep in mind that this is something that happened near us. This happened to somebody. This happened to Professor Yan. Uh, he leaves behind a wife and children, young children. Um, I don't think, I think they were both under five. And so that's really the greatest tragedy in all of this and also the great tragedy that somebody has um, made their life their life so much harder by doing this so keep that in your prayers too so with all of that today's message is one focused on some ministry from TLC and just some mind you if we tried for all of it we'd be here all day and beyond this was the plan even before the events of August 28th. So the 28th, not the 24th. As this is our second God's Work, Our Hands Sunday, and it was previously known as Rally Sunday, and we can still call it Rally Sunday when we talk to the people in other churches, because that's probably what they're still calling it. And I imagine it was called something before that, like Sunday School Sunday, or start of Sunday School Sunday, or Education Sunday, who knows? Uh, we can have all those things. Um, so it's a perfect time to hear about the heart of ministry that goes forth from this place. As we work with our hands or our mouth or our feet or our presence, we engage the heart, ours, our neighbors, and the very heart of God. And... You can probably tell I'm going off script on, on, on this at some point. And, you know, the reason why we call it 
God's work, our hands, is we are literally, as it says, the hands, the feet, the face of Christ. You know, in this tragedy that happened, you know, this is the kind of situation where people will say, where is God in all of this? Well, here, the only answer I know for sure, there's, you know, I don't want to get into the internal questions, but one answer I, I know for sure and I've learned in previous times is, here is God. Our hands, our feet, our hearts, we are Christ in these, in these moments. And that's the, the certain way Christ can show up. And that's what's so great about all of our ministries, too, because that is a way that Christ lives and works on the earth. So you are invited to have your heart touched and inspired by what is shared today. We will be hearing from the leader of our spiritual outreach team, a member of our Pathways and Compassion team, the lead planner of our TLC Gardens team, and a member of our Pray and Crochet team. Please welcome them and listen for the moment of the Spirit. And then I'm just going to go through the order. We have Joanne, we have Sandy, we have Jan, and we have Eileen. Hmm, I noticed there's a common thread among all those people. <laughs> They're awesome. So let's start with Joanne. Good morning. Maybe I shouldn't have sat in the back. <laughs> I'd like to tell you a little bit about our spiritual outreach committee here at TLC. Some of us have actually said maybe it should be called the spiritual reach committee because our focus is both on in reach within TLC as well as outreach into the surrounding community. For example, within TLC, our committee organizes events uh, such as the Easter breakfast, FemFest activities, the family treasure sale, the cookie walk, and helping hands, which provides some assistance uh, to some of our older members uh, with their yard work in the spring or in the fall. There are also many outreach projects and ministries that our committee carries out um, and those include one you'll hear a little bit more about next uh, with sandy barra she's going to be talking about pathways in compassion which falls under uh, the spiritual outreach committee and as well another um, very active partnership with an agency called family promise family promise assists families who are experiencing homelessness and uh, we have a very um, energetic leader in that regard, and that's Janet Wilson. She pairs up with Family Promises uh, director, as well as some of the other churches in the area. And uh, to the end that we have hosted twice this year already, the mobile shelter that Family Promise has to again provide services and assistance to families experiencing homelessness. Additionally, another very large outreach project that we offer here uh, through our spiritual outreach committee is that of Angel Tree. And I know many, 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 probably most of you know about that and have been involved in that in one way or another. And um, through that Christmas time annual project, our, our um, congregation is generous enough to donate various Christmas gifts and gift cards to benefit many local families in need. So those are a few of our outreach efforts uh, within our larger community. Our, our committee also holds um, what many of you know as Spiritual Outreach Sundays, and those happen periodically throughout the year. Um, the purpose of those Spiritual Outreach Sundays is to uh, gather up donations of specific items that are beneficial to local nonprofit agencies. For example, um, 
we gathered up um, personal hygiene items and other uh, types of products that benefit uh, the homeless by giving those items to Snuggle Sacks, an agency um, out of the Linden Fenton area, as well as Carriage Town Ministries um, out of the Flint area. And just a couple of months ago, um, many of you donated school supplies, which um, we gathered to provide, which we did, to the Fenton Center of Hope. And that was in support and assistance uh, with their um, back to school blast, which benefits local children that need those additional uh, school supplies that they may not be able to afford themselves. With suggestions from our congregation, our very generous congregation, I might add, our committee designates uh, either an internal program, like maybe TLC youth programs, or again, a local nonprofit to be the recipient of the monthly noisy offering, which we gather. Speaking of noisy offering, and as Jan mentioned earlier, um, this month's noisy offering is going to go toward um, us sending a mini care package out to each one of our, our TLC college students uh, sometime in October. We want them to know definitively that they're in our hearts and in our prayers, even though they may have moved a little further away from home. Um, there's information in the bulletin that you have today, as well as the Friday uh, emails to let you know what specific items we're looking for if your heart is so moved to donate any of those items to kind of round out our, our mini care package. And um, Pastor Kate said we should share a story. So my story is very brief, but very meaningful to me. Um, it has to do with my volunteering as a, a pathway in compassion visitor to some of the patients at the Fenton Healthcare Center. And um, I normally see uh, certain patients on a, on a regular basis twice a month uh, through that Pathways program. And I was reading a, a devotion and, by, and accompanying Bible verses to one of the residents that I normally see, who I normally see. And after I was finished with that devotion, her roommate kind of yells over, I'm listening too. And I thought, oh my gosh, I was so touched by that. So, you know, we never really know uh, who who all we are reaching through the word of God, through God's love. So that's an example of a very rewarding experience that I had uh, in working with Pathways in Compassion. So in closing, our committee tries with hands and with hearts to reach out to those young, old, and in between to actively carry out God's work. And if you think you might like to be part of what the Spiritual Outreach Committee does, we, we would welcome you um, with open arms and hands uh, anytime to attend our meetings uh, on Zoom uh, or just speak to myself or any one of us about how you might like to help. Thank you so much. And now Sandy Vera will share um, some information on Pathways in Compassion. Thank you, Jan. Oh my gosh, the light is, sun is very bright here. Okay. Uh, anyway, I'm up here to talk about the Pathways program, which is, uh, which Joanne uh, just explained as part of the spiritual outreach and um, I, I wanted to I guess all of it is kind of personal story um, because there, it, it's got such an interesting background uh, in 2011 and now I'm just thinking that was 12 years ago um, Bertha Anderson uh, got put in a nursing home and she was a long time TLC -er. she had been member of here for like ever since probably the church began 
And Ellen Grosser had kind of taken her under her wing. And uh, when uh, Bertha was put in the nursing home, she, she asked the congregation uh, for people to visit Bertha. And so um, Madeline Smith and I raised our hands. And we started visiting Bertha on a weekly basis. Um, little did we know that it would end up being the Pathways program eventually. In visiting with Bertha, um, I, uh, I met her roommate, who is, they have three beds in a room, three beds in a room. And it's, it's not a big room either. Six, six people, six patients share one bathroom. So I got to kind of know Bertha's roommate, um, and her name was Marianne Evans. She had been put in there, she was in a walker, and she, had, she was an only child, and she had no children, and her family didn't care about her, they were all up in Clio, and um, she had nobody came and saw her. And I was so shocked by this. Uh, Madeline and I, we started visiting her. And eventually, uh, Bertha passed away uh, about a year later. And Madeline and I kept going to see um, Mary Ann. Pastor Mark was our pastor then. And I would go into him almost on a weekly basis and whine to him about how miserable things were there and what I saw and what I witnessed. and. And uh, I said, well, you know, where is Christ in all of this? Just as uh, Greg was talking about, sometimes we might ask that. And Pastor Mark, he knew, he knew, he said, uh, you know, we got to do something. So Christ is in all of us. And, and a, a few weeks later, he started, the, um, he started the Pathways program, sat down, and he, write up, he wrote up a, um, a mission statement about pathways and had a meeting. His first meeting was held in 2015 and eight of us met, met in his office and we started the Pathways program. Um, today we have expanded to two nursing homes and also our Pathways program has, we are partnered with Linden Presbyterian and also uh, with um, Farmington Hills Pathways Program. So, you know, we've really, really expanded a lot from Matt, Madeline and I uh, just visiting Mary Ann at the beginning. Um, our jam and craft sale raises funds, not only for Pathways, we like to buy them all, you know, some Christmas things. Uh, a couple of years ago, the money went toward buying um, Fenton Health Care, one of those popcorn wagons. And they use that in their activities a lot. And so, you know, on Wellbridge, we bought them a book cart. And so they can wheel that around. Uh, we also have another volunteer who goes around to Wellbridge and wheels the cart around. So the patients have their choice of books. Um, anyway, uh, our current uh, chairman is Joanne Rinke, and she runs the meetings very tightly, and we get through them in an hour, and we get a lot accomplished. Uh, we have Zoom meetings the two, second Tuesday of each month. So we would love to have you join us and maybe just attend a Zoom meeting or uh, you know, join us and give us your thoughts about it or, you know, your opinions or your advice. Uh, so anyway, we'll see you at the jam sale. My portion of this presentation is to talk about the TLC Meditation Trail and Gardens. And my story is a personal one because um, at my house, we always had property and a trail back there. My husband and I liked our property a lot and we worked on it. And um, 
I had developed a fitness trail out there. I would, <laughs> this was when I was only like in my 40s, so that was a long time ago. <laughs> but I would run from station to station and do little uh, weightlifting or you know, lunges or <laughs> ab work or whatever. Um, but at, at the age of 48, my husband got brain cancer and died. And that was a very sudden, like falling off a cliff moment in my life. And that trail became, for me, my source of solace. Um, it was a place where I could go and talk to God because um, and uh, when you're out there in nature, you can see that all those other little critters out there, God is taking care of. All the birds, all the deer, all the muskrats, all everybody else who's out there, they're not worried about anything. And, you know, death occurs regularly to them, too but they just keep on keeping on. And I realized that that was the place that healed me. My trail healed me and my gardens healed me. Gardening is very healing as somebody like Goldie can tell you. It's a place where you can go and just lose yourself in the beauty and the work because <laughs> you know it's a lot of work. So when I had the opportunity um, I realized that we have a beautiful space here on our on our property to use for such a trail. It's not maybe a big trail, but it certainly is a place where you can go away and be away from everything. You can't really hear traffic down there very much, but you can see wildlife. Rob will point out that there's an osprey that lives on this marsh. Um, there are also all kinds of wading birds. I've seen both white herons and blue herons. There's all kinds of cranes. Um, there are um, muskrats and groundhogs and birds of all kinds and turtles. And it's an amazing place to be. S but obviously, a trail needs upkeep, and so do gardens. <laughs> so, and there's also a new project that is being started which is going to be a rock garden. It is a program that exists at several other Lutheran churches in our area. The Lutheran Church in Clarkston is one of them. And um, the idea behind this program on a dragonfly's wings is to bring awareness and attention to the problem of suicide and suicide prevention, especially among youth. Um, when I was a high school teacher, um, during one of my last years of teaching, um, one of the one of the sophomores in our humanities class committed suicide, and then just a few days after that, there was another girl. I don't know if this was related to the first person's suicide. She attempted suicide, um, and it was a major blow to our not only class but our school. Um, and. We don't know the reasons behind anybody's decision to make that drastic move. Um, but we do know that God still loves them. Um, but the families left behind are tragically changed forever. And whether the death was suicide or whether the death was um, fentanyl or whether the death was uh, shooting or whether the death was just a disease, whether the death was anything, Death hurts. Um, it hurts the people who are still left behind. And we plan on creating a rock garden where people can go, sit, meditate, and see all these rocks that have been painted with messages of hope and sustaining. And that's where we need you because that rock garden is going to be over there right next to the playground. Um, so we, Paul and I have begun the process. We have sort of mapped it out and sprayed um, grass killer. So the next two segments of work are going to be laying landscaping fabric and putting down rocks so that we will have the, the space. Um, from there, we'd like to add other rocks to sort of make a, a beautiful space so we could use your input on making beauty. We could use your input on what kind of benches to get. And we could certainly use everybody's input in painting rocks. That will be the fun part. We are going to have a rock painting uh, party, so to speak, 
um, during our tattoo service um, on September 24th. So we will have rock painting tables set up with supplies. And um, we plan to get this project off the ground soon. So if you are interested in being a gardener, being a trail person, being a rock gardener, being a rock painter, there's plenty of work for you in this mission. <laughs> so thank you very much. And now I will give it over to Eileen Barker. Hello. It seems like I'm the only one up here who's bringing luggage with them. <laughs> and I'm, I have to say that I'm really excited and blessed to have come into this group called Pray and Crochet. And I, Pastor mentioned at one point that she was going to start this group, and I said, I'm in. Even though I wasn't sure exactly what we were going to be doing there, I wasn't sure what we were accomplishing, or, or whatever. So, but early this spring, she started this group called Pray and Crochet. The first mo meeting I went to, I saw um, Linda Foreman, um, Pastor Kate, and I, I think were the three that were there for the first meeting. And they were working on these bags made out of recycled plastic grocery bags. I had never seen anything like this before. So they showed me, Linda Foreman especially, showed me, this is what you do. And I have to tell you, this is the first bag that I made. And let me tell you, I had problems. <laughs> I guess I didn't read the instructions very carefully. I, I have crocheted before. And it just, the bag just kept getting, the bottom of the bag just kept, kept getting bigger <laughs> and bigger. And I took it to the meeting and I asked, I said, Linda, what am I doing wrong? I said, this is beginning to look like a Moses basket. <laughs> so she helped me out. And with a little tweaking, this is the bag that it turned out to be. That's my very first bag. Since then, I have just finished my 12th bag. And after doing it for a little while, I decided this is my this is one of my recent I decided hmm I'd like to put my own little mark on it so I have this bowl of old buttons from my mother from Tom's mother and I thought well there is a use for my old buttons so now I call mine the button bags and I make sure that I have some kind of a unique button on every bag that I, every bag that I make <coughs> this is my most recent one that I just finished. Can you turn it around? So you can see that I always add some kind of doodads on my bags. That's cool. <clears throat> and then we decided that, hmm, I think we need to know who is making these bags. So we came up there with this little tag that says made for a friend, TLC. And so every bag we donate has that tag. And where these bags go, are these bags go to an organization called DRAW, which stands for Disaster Relief at Work. And they literally help people all over the world. They help the homeless. They help people in where disasters have happened. I know right now they're working with people in Hawaii, people, homeless people who need a bag to carry their minimal bits and articles that they have. And it's waterproof. You can, you know, there's, there's, some are big, some are small, and it's just a wonderful, wonderful program. And there's a place in Waterford that not works, that is the draw headquarters, correct? One of the draw headquarters. And I go there, and they have people that volunteer to cut these bags, grocery bags, into loops. You then loop them, knot them, loop them together, and you begin to crochet these bags. And they, um, I go to that, to the coffee shop, and they give me as many balls, and it's called plarn, plastic yarn. They give me as many balls of plarn as they would like, as I would like, 
and um, for free. And they have a, a group that cuts the bags, rolls up the bags, and of course donates the bags. I'd like to show you one that my granddaughter began. We spent Labor Day weekend with our granddaughter and she started this one. She said, even kids need bags. And But I have to tell you, this is the size hook you need. It's a Q hook. The, the plastic bags come like this and you just crochet, single crochet or a chain. So I would, I would invite anyone, even if you don't crochet, but especially if you do, please join our group. It's fun. I never thought I would be doing this, but I'm into it, let me tell you. And um, you, can not only, you not only have to know how, how to crochet, but we need bags cut. This morning we spent time looping these bags together, and there's a table in the uh, church in the, where we can, you can sit and loop bags together or learn how to do this. And I just can't tell you how wonderful it is to be involved. And come on in, you also may get hooked. Before you go, what, uh, specifically what size is that hook if someone wants to buy one? It's a Q. It's a Q. It's a Q. Oh, you said that. I did. It's I thought you said it was cute. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's not only that, but it's a Q hook. Thanks okay. so much. Thank you. And I've done it too. I've done the, the um I've done the crocheting too, so I can promise you it's very forgiving because I Yes. Fine, it is. Mo fine motor skills it's, are not my thing. It's very, very and my grandson even did some some rows of of uh parning and crocheting. You're good at getting people involved, I think. Thank you. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for sharing, and just like to reiterate that that is only that was only four examples of all sorts of other things we have going on. As we close this, and you know, we didn't we didn't pick and choose. No one was you know we didn't, not showing any kind of favoritism. We just these are four that we got to feature this time around. So, as we close this time of sharing and inspiration. Let us share thanks and blessings for the work that God does through us from the community of TLC. I invite you to prepare your hearts for prayer and to focus on your hands, open and offered, palms up, as we pray. Blessed be the work of our hands, O Holy One. Blessed be these hands that have touched life Blessed be these hands that have nurtured creativity. Blessed be these hands that have held pain. Blessed be these hands that have embraced with passion. Blessed be these hands that have tended gardens. Blessed be these hands that have closed in anger. Blessed be these hands that have planted new seeds. Blessed be these hands that have harvested ripe fields. Blessed be these hands that have soothed the pains of others. Blessed be these hands that have cleaned, washed, mopped, and scrubbed. Blessed be these hands that have become naughty with age. Blessed be these hands that are wrinkled and scarred from doing justice. Blessed be these hands that have reached out and been received. Blessed be these hands that hold the promise of the future. Blessed be the works of your hands, O Holy One. Amen. <laughs>